we all agree that the US economy is doing very well. We've added some jobs. We've kept we've managed to kept to keep inflation down over the last couple of weeks and months. Um, the economy is growing um, in terms of GDP is over four percent. The economy is doing well. That we can agree on. However, normal Americans, working class Americans, middle class Americans are not feeling the effects of this booming economy or an economy that's supposed to be doing well. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you the, the conversations that the conversation that we're not having or what is missing from the narrative of the economy. The economy is doing well, but it is only doing well for some people. The fact that regular Americans can't feel it, is, the regular Americans aren't feeling it, suggests something quite important and powerful. This is very important, the point I'm about to make. One of the, the, the what we're, when we look at figures or numbers or data, we cannot do so in a very parochial or myopic way. The economy is doing well, but you know what is, do you know what is, uh, but only for the, the, the top one or two or three percent. In fact, incomes or wealth have quadrupled over the last 20 years for the top earning Americans, for the one percent. What, what people are not seeing or the con what is missing from the conversation is income inequality. Income inequality has, income inequality has also quadrupled. Income inequality is at its highest in this country, in the United States. So while the economy is doing well, while, pe while we are growing economically, we are developing people, we are earning, it's not being felt amongst regular Americans working class Americans, middle class Americans, because the income, because the revenues that have been generated, the wealth, the benefit, the gains, the peace, it's, all, it's, it's only being felt at the top because only those people are benefiting, are reaping the benefits. That is what is at the heart of the issue. So yes, the economy is doing well. Yes, we are growing, and so on and so forth. However, only those people at the top are feeling the, the growth and the effects. That is a problem. Income inequality is high. So that is part of the conversation we should be having. Not only that, child poverty has, has quadrupled since 2018 or 2019. We've done, sev we've done several shows and, I, and, and I've talked about this before. So this is not new news. We don't have to t show you the data again that suggests um, income inequality and child and poverty. But and there's also homelessness. Homelessness is, at, is on the rise. And I'm in Philadelphia. Homelessness is at its highest. So while the, while President Biden and the Democrats are are touting the economy, you have to be careful about um, promoting the economy as 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 as, uh, as a hallmark of your agenda of your scorecard think that's doing well because it's not for, it's doing well for for the wealthiest americans but not for the middle class and the working class and for the masses and we have to put all of the e e economics into perspective we have to study income inequality and poverty we have to put that into perspective i'm Ronaldo mckenzie from um and this is um, this is a, a quick note here at the Neoliberal Round at the Neoliberal Corporation. We're always serving the world today to solve tomorrow's challenges by making popular what was the monopoly. Of course, I discussed income inequality in my first book, Neoliberalism and Income inequality, poverty and resistance, which is available here at the Neoliberal.com and Barnes and Noble, Amazon, so on and so forth. I discussed this in the class at Caribbean Thought at Jamaica Theological Seminary. And in my second book, I even go deeper talking about not just looking at neoliberal globalization um, but in the global itself but looking at the global picture and looking at the working class but the black position within the world.